Welcome back to Aim with Speed. I am Chris with Poolometry, and today we are looking at long two in the corner. While this is a somewhat uncommon shot, certainly when I see people shoot this, it's pretty rare, and it's even more rare for people to shoot it with confidence. But this ball, while it's not a layup, it is a fairly pocketable shot. And when you see the numbers and how easy they are to memorize, I think you're gonna wanna add this shot to your repertoire. This pattern starts at 9.5 on the end rail going by half diamonds, aiming first through 0.8 on the side rail. And then our first change is gonna be by 0.8 as well. So 0.8 plus 0.8 is 1.6 through diamond 10. That actually kind of makes this sort of a memorable shot pattern because 9.5 is sort of a really weird place to start a pattern and 0.8 and then add 0.8 again, it starts out nicely. But we're not gonna keep adding 0.8, we're gonna go up, so we're gonna go up to 0.9. So 10.5 goes through 2.5, which is 1.6 plus 0.9. And then we're gonna go up again to adding one. So we're going from 2.5 to 3.5 from diamond 11. And then from 11.5, we're going up to 4.6 because we're adding 1.1, which of course continues the incremental pattern nicely. Also note that I am hitting all of these with a medium speed center ball hit. Up next, right after this, I'm gonna demonstrate how I adjust this shot using speed. To aim the shot with speed, I'm gonna demonstrate from 10 through 1.6. Again, this is my benchmark medium speed shot. So let me just demonstrate that this pockets with my medium speed stroke. But if I cheat towards the corner and I find this cheats by about 0.4, I'm gonna cheat with fast speed. So from 1.6, I'm going down to about 1.2. 10 through 1.2 shoots with my fast speed stroke. And if I cheat the other way, 0.4, so 1.6 down is 1.2, that's fast speed. This one goes slow speed the other way, that goes 10 through two, and this goes slow speed. And as usual, I've written all this down on a shot chart that you can get at poolarmistry.com, including the approximate vanishing point where all the medium speed lines coincide. But of course, what if you are beyond the speed window? Let me just show you, for example, let's say from 9.5, instead of being at diamond 0.8, we were two pockets up to diamond 2.8. Well, one thing to consider is that if you're way off of the any of these adjustment lines, you probably have a better option. So for example, here, I've knowingly actually set up 9.5, 2.8, actually pockets two rails in the side. Now, if you insist on shooting this shot long two in the corner, I'm not gonna argue with you. I actually like shooting this shot quite a bit. However, I would not recommend trying to load up on English to make this happen. So saying like, well, I know the ball needs to go this way on the table towards the point eight line, so maybe I can throw it with outside English. Let me just show you lining up with throwing it. You just get this weird rail action between the two, they combine to be very unpredictable. So instead, if you wanna shoot this shot long two in the corner, I'm gonna recommend you cut into one of the long two in the corner lines. Now we already know it's off of my 9.5 through 0.8 line. So I'm gonna cross over to my 10 through 1.6 line. And I notice I'm pretty close to that. I'm inside that. So I think I'm gonna aim through about 1.5 and I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of outside English to help minimize the throw. As a kick shot, keep in mind you need to be very attentive to your use of English or lack thereof as it may be because if you put extra English on it, it's gonna throw it way offline. Let me show you 9.5 through 0.8. I'm gonna be very careful to put no English on it. There's a center ball, medium speed hit, and I should kick the 11 in the pocket. But if instead, I shoot this same trajectory, medium speed, with extreme inside English. I'm gonna not kick to the corner, I'm actually gonna kick towards that 12 in the side pocket.
And if I use instead the same line with inside, no, that's outside English, I'm actually gonna kick towards the 10. So now consider with me, if extreme English goes towards the side and zero English goes towards the corner, then if we're going towards the middle of that, we would need about half of extreme English. Now we're gonna come off from that direction there. So that would mean coming into this halfway point would be more like actually coming into the 10 there. So if I shoot 10 through 1.6, if I use half of extreme English, I'm gonna use about a tip. That's generally about what you can do. Two tips is about extreme. So one tip of English, I think I'm gonna to kick towards the 10. Now it's not gonna be perfect, but it is a theory of what you can do to try to adjust from the line you're on and I kick towards the 10. Now if I leave that there, another option would be this. I actually like this option better than the English. I find the English harder to calculate, but this one might be hard to follow. Again, we're kind of in bonus territory here for kicking, but see if you can follow along. I'm on my 10 through 1.6 line, and I'm currently kicking, if I shoot zero English, it's gonna come back something like this, right? Something like this angle. So what I need is to open up this angle quite a bit. That looks like about this much. Now what my brain does, I'm going to do that on my line. I'm opening up and I'm then going to think about cutting that in about half. So whatever my trajectory was through 1.6, whatever I open up, this is about the distance from the line I was estimating there. Again, this is just an estimate. I'm going to do about half that. So I'm going to aim more through about, about maybe 2.5, 2.6, and I'm going to get pretty close to that 10 with this adjustment.